What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Ryan here and today I want to talk about the difference between game programming versus let's say web programming or general software development. So most of us working professionally as a programmer are web developers. We work with web technologies because just about everything is internet connected nowadays so that's where all the money is at and we don't always get the chance to dabble into game development. So just for some context, a long time ago I worked on this uh, prototype game about a turtle sliding down a hill. So I started off with this model of a turtle, added some animations to it, learned a bunch of stuff, and I ended up building this prototype of a turtle going down a hill. Now this was built in Unreal Engine 4, um, and I kind of want to build this again, but in Unity, because I think it's going to perform better and it's going to be better for mobile. So what I have now is a really basic prototype of a ball rolling down a hill. Eventually this will be a turtle, but in terms of the physics and everything, to get it to slide around, you actually have to create a ball for the collision detection. So using the keyboard, I can make this ball sort of move around, and but it's still going to be bound to gravity. And I got a little bit of snow going on here, so it's a fun little prototype. So what we have here is, you can see there's three boxes here. The green box is the camera. The blue box represents the position where the camera tries to be. You can see it's always smoothly sort of transitioning there, but it's never going to actually be there. And so I'll talk about that in a minute. And then the yellow represents where the camera wants to look. So there's this idea that in game programming, you have to be really good at math. But really what you have to be good at is understanding the relationships between objects. The position of those points is moving relative to where the character is and where the character is pointed. And so there's like all these relationships, this thing related to that thing related to that thing. But in the end, you kind of end up with a decent experience. So once you've created these sort of points of interest, then it's just a matter of writing the code to use those. So let's go ahead and jump into the code and see how this thing works. Now the ball has something called a rigid body component, which is what allows it to basically obey physics. It has mass, drag, we can see it's using gravity. So right off the bat, no hands, without even using my script, the ball is going to apply a gravitational force. So building off of that, I can use WASD to apply a force to the ball to sort of nudge it in a particular direction. And so we have sort of an indirect control over where the ball goes by applying a force to it. So there's really no complex math here. You have something called a vector, which is a direction. So if we press the W key, then it's going to add a force towards the forward vector. And I multiply it by speed, which is just a custom variable that I came up with, times two, and then delta time. Now, when you're doing game programming, using delta time is important because some people are gonna run the game at 20 frames per second. Some people might run it at 120 frames per second. And you never really know frame dips can happen. So to make sure these numbers always calculate correctly, use delta time which is going to adjust that value based on the frame rate. And so for when we press the letter A, it's going to move to the left. So we actually use the right vector and then make that a negative value. When we move to the right, it's going to be the right vector. When we do S, it's going to be the forward vector, but negative. When we press the space bar, it's going to be an up vector times the force. So I'm referencing these variables right here. I have this dot speed here. I have this dot jump force and also I have this thing called camera. So here's a really cool thing about game programming with an engine like Unity or Unreal Engine is like, where do these numbers come from? Well, when I add the code here, the game engine is gonna automatically add fields here that represent that value. So here's the camera, here's the speed, here's the jump force. And I can go here and adjust these values however I see fit. And this allows you to really quickly experiment with different things when you're building a game. So just to demonstrate that, let's say public float coolness. So here you can see it added a value called coolness. I can adjust this value to be whatever I want. And here I can use that value in the code wherever I want. So it's a very intuitive thing. So here you can see I also have a variable for the camera and I'm also referencing that here as well. So because that's a game object, it allows me to scroll through and pick any game object to represent that variable in the script. And the reason this is nice is because normally I would have to say, okay, this dot camera equals 
this dot game object dot scene dot um, root game objects of blah blah like I would have to iterate through the game objects and try to find the camera but no instead I can just specify it here in the game engine so when you take advantage of these parameters in the game engine it makes things really straightforward and simple so here you can see I have an arrow that's pointed always in the direction that the ball is moving towards the direction of the velocity and the reason I needed to add this is because with a ball it's kind of hard to tell exactly where it's pointed and what's cool is that those boxes are moving relative to this arrow as well and they're pointed in the direction of the arrow so there's these relationships between these different objects so if you look at the code for this velocity direction indicator so we're using something called a lerp and a lerp allows you to sort of smoothly transition between one point and another you can use a lerp for position so that an object will smoothly slide from point A to point B. And you can use a lerp for rotation so that an object will smoothly rotate towards a certain direction as well. So here I have a lerp going from the current rotation of the object to what's called a look at rotation. In this case, the velocity represents both the direction and magnitude. So we can use this built in function called quaternion look rotation to use the velocity, which already contains direction to basically create a rotation for us. Now, I don't know anything about quaternions, but you do just need to understand that this is the thing that you're going to need when you want to create a rotation. So I'm not trying to teach you game development, but I'm just trying to show that in a few lines of code, you can create a kind of interesting interesting prototype. And a lot of this is not like deep linear algebra or anything. It's actually pretty straightforward as long as you use the built-in functions that the engine gives you. Here, when it comes to the camera, I'm doing the same thing. I'm using a lerp for the position. So this blue box right here represents the back. And then the yellow box here represents the front. And then the green box is the camera. What I'm doing here is I'm lerping the position from the current position of the camera to the back. So as far as rotation, I'm lerping from the current rotation and then I'm creating a look rotation between the back and front. So if I were to look from the back to the front, that line of sight there can be converted into a rotation. So yeah, that's all I wanted to show you guys. The plan is to release a game for iOS or Android where you can slide down a mountain and it's just nice and chill and relaxing. And I'm gonna continue posting videos following the progress of this game. So that's it for today, folks. I just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek of the project I'm working on and, and kind of show you what game programming looks like compared to other forms of programming. I'm gonna continue posting videos about this project, but it's always gonna be focused on the code not necessarily level design or modeling or animation or any of that. I'm a code guy, so I'm going to talk about code. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm giving up on my other projects. I'm still working on thumbgen.io. It's just that I like to mix it up so I don't get burned out on one particular project. So, hey, if you like the video, please like and subscribe and support a little YouTuber like myself. And thank you for watching.